In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create a select button here. And when we click on one of these options, it would change this here. And you can imagine this could be like a sidebar design. We have a menu and we have some options to change whatever we do on our chart. So let's start to look how we can do these kind of options here and make it dynamic. So let's start to look how to use the select option to change the data in chart.js. So the first thing what we need is we need to get here a, uh, we need to go to chartjs3.com getting started this specific link here to get the boiler template. You can find this link as well in the description box. One shown here, copy this entire chunk of code. There we are. And if you want to understand the code, make sure you watch this video here. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put it in here and then I will cut out the title, put that title in here. There, we'll save that, but I want to also extend the size of the chart. I'll say this will be 80%. Save that, refresh, and there we are. So what I want to do next is I want to put in here like a menu sidebar. So basically a sidebar, and we have here the editor area, or basically where the chart is being shown. So it looks a bit like a dashboard. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put in here just quickly, dot row. So I'm going to make here row. And this row will have display flex because we want to have a flex box. And what we want to do here is dot sidebar. And then in here, make sure we have here this display spelled correctly. Sidebar, and then we're going to say here flex will be equal to 25%. And once we have more, we will have here, I guess, a background. And I'll make the background just a simple gray color. Hashtag triple six, or sorry, uh, triple C. And then we have here maybe, I guess, padding. We might need the padding here of 20 pixels. So once we've got that, what I want to do here is dot column. And the column will have a flex of 75%. All right, so once we have this, what I want to do here is, of course, to put in this nicely in here. Let's say a div, and this div will be our class row. And then within this class row, we're going to say another div. We're going to say a class, and this class will be the sidebar. We close that. And there we are. And then we make another one, which will be not the sidebar, but it will be just the column itself. In the column. What I'm going to do is I will cut out all of this here, or at least this chunk of code, put it in there, proper indentation, save that, refresh, there we are. All right, interesting. We have this here, but this should not be that tiny. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to look here, flex 25%, do we have this? All right, this, uh, the sidebar here, class sidebar. So that looks all nice. So what I want to do then is, uh, let's see here, maybe we can say here the height. I'm going to force in here the height, I guess that's probably the one I was missing. Uh, we can say here height will be 100 of the viewport or vertical height here. So we have this one here, 75 and 25, alright, I'm surprised that this doesn't want to uh, respond. All right, so after some quick checking, of course, the reason why it doesn't work is because right now this has a certain width. And what we have to do here is we have to remove this width here. Well, let's put that like that. Save that, refresh, and there we are. So now we have a nice item. What I want to do here is select option that will trigger the item here. So to do this, what I'm going to do in here is just going to create a quick select here. In the sidebar, I'm going to say here, um, select. And then we're going to say here, option. And then here we're going to put in the value. And in this case, the value will be quite straightforward. We're going to say here, a structure where we have the cost and the profit. So I'm going to say cost. This will be the cost. And I have another option here that will grab here the profits. So we say profits of profit put in here profit all right save that then what I want to do here is I want to trigger this so how do we trigger this well basically we need to put a function in here and then we'll be triggering on change and then we're going to say here update chart of course this here is still not ready 
Well, we have this here, this might be this, but of course we don't have our data structure ready. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab the data structure or we're going to create a data structure based on the cost and profit. So what I want to do here, I'll just put it here above. Then I'm going to say your constant. I'm going to say your values or financials. I may say just values, that's fine. Equal bracket. Then in here, basically what I'm doing here is a data structure, which are very powerful. And what we want to do in here is first of all, we're going to get the ID, or maybe we can say here instead of the ID, the year. And the year will be, let's say, 2019. And then we say comma, and then we have here the financials and the financial details. That's curly braces. And then within here, we can say, for example, the cost will be equal to 1,500. And we have profit of 2,000. So once we have this, maybe we could even do here another one is the sale of, uh, I guess, three, five in this case. That makes sense. So I'm going to do a comma here, uh, or no, you no need for a comma here, but we need to do a comma here. We can duplicate this multiple times. And I'm going to just duplicate it four times. So we have here 2020, 2021, and 2022. And to make it a little bit of difference, you're going to make this one zero. And this one is, uh, I guess, here we can say maybe 2000. And this one will be 25. And what I will do here, I'll just increase here with a single value additional. So this 25, that will be 7. And this here will be 7, 5. Uh, am I correct? That is 3. Sorry, I don't know how I get on 7 here. Uh, profits. Oh, of course, this doesn't make any sense at all. I, anyway, uh, that should be four. Four, four, of course. This should be three. And then we have here another one that's three, five. And finally, here it is. That's all right. So if I save this now, of course, nothing happens. Refresh, you can see here nothing happens. But you have the data structure ready. You can just copy this. I'm going to put it in here. Delete everything here. And this one, we, this label can be removed as well. If I save this, nothing happens. The reason why nothing happens is we didn't indicate now the new structure here, where we have the year and the financials. And basically, the year is just our x values at the bottom, and then the financials is basically the y value. So what we're going to say here is just very simple: put a comma here, and then what we're going to say here will be parsing. And we're doing it in the data set itself, but you can do it as well in the options. It's one or the other. When I say parsing, and parsing me, or basically to parse, means to make something readable for. So we make this readable for charges. So we're going to make our data structure easy to read. So we're going to say here, the x axis key will be equal to what exactly? Well, let's look up here, and we're going to grab here the year. So this is the x-axis, because it will be focused on the x-scale. Then we have the y-axis key, and this one, depending on what could be cost, sale, profit. However, it is based on financials.cost. So I'm going to grab this, put that in here, and just say your cost for now. If I save this, refresh, you can see here, we're getting the cost, and if I'm not mistaken, one five was the first one, in here, oh, there we are, one five, one two, and two five. There we are. So this looks very nice. But what I want to do now is I want to switch to profit, and then it should automatically switch as well to profit, like a dashboard structure here. And you could do so much stuff, of course, with that. So I'm going to scroll down here, and I'm going to create a new function. And this function name is we already have some preparation on this. If you look here, you scroll up here to unchange update chart, and then you can just say here this. To whatever we have selected here. So I'm going to scroll down here. We say here, update chart. And then what I want to do in the update chart here, I'm going to say here it will be the select or the option, whatever we have selected. And if we do a console log here, you say option, save, refresh, open up developer tab, you will see eventually something being displayed here. All right, so you get here the item. But what I want to do, of course, is the dot value. I want to extract. The specific value here. So if I do this, now I see profit. And if I do this here, cost, it will jump here, or this show, it jumps to cost, but here should be eventually adjusting as well. 
So what we're going to do here is basically going to say my chart dot update to update the value. That's basically the last item. And then what we want to do here is basically we're going to say my chart dot and then we just go back all the way to the data to data data sets and then we go to parsing and then the x-axis or the y-axis we need. In our case we need the y-axis key. So what I'm going to say here data dot data sets index zero because we only have one data set and then we're going to say here if I'm not mistaken it's parsing dot let's double check data data set zero scroll down here parsing and then the y-axis key so here equal to and then you might say all right you just need to grab this one but this is not the case by the way so if I save this refresh you will see here it doesn't work it disappears the values disappear it doesn't give an error because it's not really a mistake or uh, well from computer programming point of view it's not a mistake but what it is is basically we need to be specific the reference is incorrect because we need to go to financial dot cost or financial dot profit so what we need to do here I'm going to use a backtick I'm going to use here basically uh, template literal so a backtick concatenation this is a variable so I'm going to say a dollar sign curly braces put in there and then what I want to do is what is the official path which is financial dot as you see here same here but how you can see it here financial dot sale profit etc etc save that refresh now if I change this there we are you can see here it changes it nicely then go back here it jumps here again and of course we could even highlight this even more with another level and you can just copy this then you could say here for example sale or sale so I guess in this case we just have sale so we say sale save refresh profit all right and now you have the sale there we are and that's basically how to do this so if you enjoyed this video and maybe besides this you want to understand what we did here with the data structures even more well in that case i'm going to recommend you this video here on how to use data structures for multiple data sets in chart.js